They say you're either a numbers person or you're not. But one Sydney math teacher is working to change that misconception. Eddie Wu is on a mission to make mathematics understandable and accessible to everyone, even enjoyable, believe it or not. His unique and dynamic approach to teaching has not only made him a worldwide YouTube sensation, but has led to Eddie being named as New South Wales Local Hero in the Australian of the Year Awards, and he's delivering the Australia Day address next week. I spoke with Eddie earlier. So mathematics, funnily enough, wasn't your strongest subject when you were a student. It certainly didn't come naturally to you. So how did you wind up becoming a maths teacher? Was that a, a conscious choice? It was definitely a deliberate decision for me because I set out to become a high school teacher because I wanted to make a difference in the lives of young people. And that personal journey, particularly from when you enter high school to when you leave and you're a fully formed adult making decisions for yourself and choosing your own trajectory in life, that's what I was excited about. And I wanted to do any subject that would make me useful to children in schools. And the need was in mathematics and it still is. So that's what made me lead that, to choose that subject to teach. You were happily rolling along just being a humble maths teacher and the only people who saw your lessons were the students in your classes at, at James Roos Agricultural High School, I believe. But then you started putting your maths lessons on YouTube, which then became called WooTube, appropriately enough. That was originally for the benefit of one student. Tell us how that unfolded. I met a student who I was teaching in year 10 and he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which is obviously incredibly virulent and aggressive for anyone, let alone a 16 year old boy. And we knew he would be away from school for weeks at a time. And that's no way to learn anything, but especially mathematics. I mean, many people say to me, I was okay with mathematics until they started putting letters in the mix or until calculus. And from then on, they just never got, got back on the horse. And I knew if this student's experience of mathematics this year was a substandard negative learning point for him, he just would never recover. And so I thought, you know what, I can do better than sending you home with a textbook and saying, good luck, we'll see you in a month. So I took my phone out, I started filming my lessons just within the normal classroom time that I had with my classes, and it just sort of took off from there. It certainly did take off. I think you've had about 10 million plus hits on YouTube already, and it's, you're an internet sensation, they call you, around the world. Let's just have a look at a little bit of one of your videos. And then take this guy and turn him around so that he fits on like this. Because remember, the length is X, right? Oh, oh, that's right. Right. You see it? You see it? Right? And then you're like, ah, oh, like this shape. If only I could do something meaningful with this, what do I need to add on in order to make this thing? And the answer is oh, this is what it is, and that's what it is. Square it, right? So there you have it. The students are completely intrigued there, aren't they? You can just you can hear the enthusiasm and, and the penny seems to drop for them. Your skill seems to be in packaging complex mathematics in a relatable way. How do you do that, Eddie? Well, for me, because as we mentioned before, mathematics was something I struggled with as a student. I really need to understand something in a simple way with, with metaphors and analogies that will help me wrap my head around what exactly is going on here and why is it important? And so as a consequence, that's the way I explain things. And I think students really enjoy when they're struggling with something, someone who can identify with them and empathize through that, that hard to understand process until the light finally comes on. As you know, people tend to say they're either a maths person or a non-maths person. Journalists always say we're hopeless at maths. That is something that you just hate hearing. You believe maths is accessible to everyone. Why is it so important that we all, we all get a handle on it? Well, I think a great metaphor here to help people wrap their heads around what's going on is that once upon a time we said exactly the same thing about reading. We said there's a very tiny group of the population who reads and writes, that's their job, we call them scribes, and the rest of us, we can get by without literacy, what is that? There was obviously no access to the printing press, to reading, to widespread public education, and we got by and thought that was fine. But now, from this side of history, we know much better. We know that reading is just integral to the way that you can interact with the world and society. And mathematics is the same. We just haven't crossed that line yet to understand on a broad cultural level how important it is in terms of how woven into nature and society mathematics is. So you, you see maths as not something that's its own entity. You say it unlocks a, an entire world. Explain that to the non-maths people. 
in the same way that once you can read, it's not just that you can see a list of words and understand their meaning. It helps you have a perspective on the way other people think. And it helps you engage with a world that you do not interact with in any other way. When you understand mathematics, you can sense the patterns around you. You can understand how to manage your money. You can see how your numbers for credit cards and cash and logging in, everything that we do online is all kept safe by mathematics. And so seeing the way that mathematical reality undergirds everything that we do in our world is kind of necessary in today's society. Obviously the other great appeal about you as a teacher, Eddie, is that you see yourself as so much more than a maths teacher, that you very much take on the the personal growth, the responsibility for that personal growth of your students, it's a very crucial time in their lives, isn't it, high school? Do you think that is the responsibility of the education system to do that? I think that both parents and teachers have this dual partnership and responsibility to make sure that young people are equipped, not just in terms of their academic skills, but also in terms of their character and citizenship and the way that students view the world. And we need everyone involved. Parents obviously have a huge role in shaping the way that their children think and feel about everything they see in society. But also in school, when we think about the vast number of hours that children are spending learning, trying to understand English, history, science, maths, we have a responsibility as teachers also to give students an understanding of how this connects to their life in their everyday sort of experience. You're giving the Australia Day address on Tuesday, a great honour. And in that, you'll also be talking about growing up as the child of migrants. Your parents were born in Malaysia, you were born here. How much has that shaped you? It's a, it's a typical Australian story, isn't it? It really has been quite decisive in terms of my own identity and what I have to bring to Australian society. And it took me a long time to grapple with not looking Western, but not sounding Eastern, and just trying to find my place in this culture and being able to say, OK, I have something valuable, I have something unique, and I want to give that to the community. And so, you know, this is why I'm so excited about being a teacher, because it gives me the opportunity to tell young people, hey, you don't know where you are, that's the characteristically adolescent challenge. You don't know what your identity is or what's important in the world. Let me help you discover what that is and find a way to make a positive influence on it.